This is the two minute warning. We'll start in two minutes. Good morning. Good morning. This is National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. And in Patterson, we thought there'd be no more fitting way to commemorate it than inviting some of our legislative heavyweights. <laughs> These are our heroes for healthy homes. Hey, hey, hey. Well, no, I didn't mean uh, <laughs> figuratively, not literally. Oh. All right, heavyweight champions. It's always a proud moment to have Senator Bob Menendez in Patterson, Senator Cory Booker, and of course, our very own yes. an MVP, a most valuable Pattersonian, huh? Congressman Bill Pasquale. Yeah. Please, let's come alive, everybody. Like, don't withhold here. And the city of Patterson and the Division of Health, and we have our health team here. They're all ready to go. They've been doing some contact tracing, and we appreciate all of the work they've been doing, laboring doing in the job. vineyard to slow the spread of this vicious virus. We've actively pursued a knock the lead out campaign that we launched last year because childhood lead poisoning is preventable. Quite frankly, the most common ways that a child can come into contact with lead is through swallowing paint dust and chips from older buildings contaminated with lead paint. And Patterson has a large housing stock that was built prior to 1978. Now, I know you like data, Senator. It's 83% of our housing stock that was built prior to 1978. So now you know the challenge we face. But today, this will help us provide healthy homes for 66 families. But I don't see this as the end of an endeavor. I see it as the beginning of building bandwidth in Patterson so that we can abate and address these issues that have been longstanding in our community. And so without any further ado, I'm going to present to you a champion for children, a hero for healthy homes. And I don't know if you noticed this, these three heavyweight champions were all former mayors as well. So they understand local government and local challenges. So ladies and gentlemen, our friend and fighter, Senator Bob Menendez. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Mayor. I should take you on the road with me. Uh, so <laughs> let me uh, – let, what's that? Just feed me. I'm Just fine. feed you. That, well, we can work that out. That's easy. In this town, it's very easy to get well-fed. So uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad – whoa, I need an infusion of that energy. Uh, I'm glad to be here in Patterson today um, with my colleagues from Congress, Senator Cory Booker, who is such a champion for New Jersey families and, and has been such a stalwart on these issues uh, since he arrived in the Senate alongside with me, uh, as well as uh, Congressman Bill Pascarell, who I'm glad to see is doing well. Yes. Uh, Patterson needs its fighting congressman, the best fight of the House of Representatives uh, has ever seen uh, in terms of representation, so we're glad he's here. Uh, we're very happy to welcome Lynn Patton from the Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, and her colleagues to this great and storied city. And Madam Speaker, thank you very much for, for joining us as well. If there's anything uh, you learn about New Jerseyans, and I just want to take a moment outside of the scope of what we're talking about today is the eighth anniversary of Super Storm Sandy. Uh, I remember that day very, very well. I remember the challenges that flowed from it uh, subsequently to this day. Uh, we made commitments to those families that we would never step aside uh, during the challenges they had, that we'd be with them, and we are still 
still believe it eight years later, working with some families uh, who uh, have still not been able to get back into their homes, still who have to fight with the insurance companies to get their fair and honest share. And we will not stop until every New Jerseyan is realized the opportunity to get back to their home. And we will not stop until we reform the National Flood Insurance Program, something that we've worked on extremely hard to make sure that in the future, God forbid we never, we ever have a Superstorm Sandy again, that we never have to go through what these families went through. So uh, they are in our thoughts uh, today and more importantly in our actions. If there's anything you learn about the people of Patterson today, it's that they're tough and resilient New Jerseyans who never stop working to give their children a brighter future. And in that regard, I want to recognize Mayor Andre Sea for his leadership, for his commitment to the people of Patterson, especially in these challenging times. He's done an extraordinary job. As soon as I walked into City Hall, as soon as I walked into City Hall, I had my temperature taken by a high-tech machine. I had to stand in a box. Thank God I passed the score uh, and, and got to be here, although Cubans are very hot-blooded, but I still passed the score uh, and was able to be here. And just the exceptional work that they have done uh, on testing and contact tracing in the midst of a pandemic. Councilman, thank you for joining us. Uh, shows extraordinary leadership, but that's only one dimension of his extraordinary leadership. Um, so today, the federal funding uh, from the Department of Housing and Urban Development being announced includes nearly $8 million that was secured for Patterson in the CARES Act, legislation that Congress passed that is incredibly important to deal with the challenges of this pandemic. In addition, one of our top priorities has always been to ensure that every family has access to housing that is both safe and affordable. That's why we're pleased to announce $3.4 million in federal funding from the lead-based paint hazard reduction grant program. As all of you know, much of our nation's affordable housing stock is both extremely outdated and urgently in need of lead remediation. Most of these homes were built before 1978, the year the United States outlawed the use of lead-based paint in housing. For children, there's no such thing as a safe amount of lead. Even brief and limited exposure to lead can fundamentally alter the course of a child's life, leading to long-term neurological, behavioral, and developmental challenges. According to the New Jersey Department of Health, more than 3,000 children each year in New Jersey are diagnosed with lead poisoning from exposure to lead paint and other sources in their home. That's why ensuring that Congress fully funds initiatives like the lead-based paint hazard reduction grant is so important to us. This $3.4 million in federal grant money is going to make a real difference in the lives of Patterson families, helping the city remove and remediate lead contaminants in over 66 homes. We must remember that too often we're dealing with lead exposure in children who already face an uphill battle in their pursuit of the American dream. Children born into poverty, and especially those in communities of color, already face a whole host of challenges, from educational inequities to economic and environmental injustice. And these families are the very same ones that have been hit disproportionately hard by the spread of COVID-19 and the economic fallout of this pandemic. Too many families are on the verge of eviction and foreclosure, too many children are struggling to learn over a computer screen, if they have the computer screen. Mm. Too many jobless workers have lost their enhanced unemployment benefits. Too many businesses are closing for good. And as the local tax revenues plummet, our state and local governments are struggling to maintain critical local services. That's why over the summer, I introduced bipartisan legislation with Senator Booker called the SMART Act, to provide a half a trillion dollars in direct aid to hard hit states like New Jersey so that we can keep teachers, first responders, public health workers, and others on the job. As COVID-19 ripples across the nation and takes root in new states, it's clearer than ever before that they need help in weathering the economic fallout of this pandemic. 
We're also fighting for additional assistance for renters and homeowners. We're calling for $100 billion to renters, particularly low-income renters, and $75 billion for homeowners. I'm leading 24 of my Democratic Senate colleagues on a bill to provide over a half a billion dollars in housing counseling assistance. As you all know, homeowners who receive counseling have better outcomes than those who do not. Their risk of default goes down. They're more likely to secure a sustainable mortgage modification, protect their credit scores, and most of all, keep their homes. Because we know, we know that entire neighborhoods suffer when waves of foreclosure rip through our communities. Simply put, there's so much more work to do when it comes to helping families stay in their homes, protect their financial security, and weather the fallout of the coronavirus catastrophe. For that reason, it should be a national outrage that Republicans in the United States Senate have refused to pass a bold COVID-19 relief package since March that meets this moment and America's growing needs. More than 229,000 Americans have died, including over 16,000 New Jerseyans. Over 8 million Americans have caught the coronavirus, and so long as it continues to spread anywhere, it remains a threat everywhere. So as proud as I am of the CARES Act funding that we have delivered to Patterson so far, the fact is we need to be doing much more. Congressman Pasquale can tell you about the two versions of the HEROES Act passed through the House of Representatives, uh, which has only faced the fate of death in Mitch McConnell's graveyard. This virus is not going anywhere. I wish it was. I wish it was ending. I wish it was gone. The worst is unfortunately far from over. We need honesty with the American people. We need the president to show real leadership and demand action by Senate, recovery, Senate Republicans on COVID relief for New Jersey, for Patterson, for the nation, for communities throughout the country. If we do that, if we do that, and if we have a real plan on dealing with testing, contact tracing, uh, and dealing with the challenges of the virus, uh, helping our health professionals be able to meet the challenge, helping communities like Palestine, we can find a better day. We can end the pandemic. We can restore our economy. We can return to a new normal. But for all that, we have to have a different paradigm. I'm glad that today we're taking care of one dimension of the challenges our families have in lead bait poisoning, but uh, we need to do a lot more. So, Mayor, thank you so much for hosting us. I, are you doing the rest of the introductions? Yes, sir. Uh, because I wouldn't want to deny anybody an introduction <laughs> that comes from Andre Sayers. So. <laughs> thank you, Senator, and we appreciate how ardent you've been with your advocacy relative to the SMART Act and Congressman you in the House with the HEROES Act. Quite frankly, we continue to incur expenditures related to this COVID crisis, but we're going to need an infusion. There has to be another round of stimulus funding, and it has to be direct aid to cities like Patterson, direct aid to states like New Jersey, because we continue to wage war against this invisible but not invincible virus. Our next speaker needs no introduction anywhere. He's got better hair than any of us. He exudes enthusiasm and energy, and he is an honorary Pattersonian. Yes. None other than the inimitable, incomparable Senator Cory Booker. You're right, Bob. Go get him, sir. You're right, Bob. That's, you're that I would not. I would not. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, I want to just give acknowledgement to the councilmen. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I want to uh, give acknowledgement to the vice president. I have uh, two of my favorite vice presidents. One is right here to my left. The other is Joe Biden. Uh, um, so she's right there at the top tier. I want everybody to know that. Uh, it is great to see Lynn Patton here, the HUD regional administrator. We are so thankful that she would come this morning. Uh, look, the only thing I can say about the mayor that is negative is the mayor has too much hair. Um, <laughs> But beyond that, uh, as a former mayor, I know great mayors. I really do. You know them when you see them. It's not the words they say, it's the work they do. 
This city is blessed to have a great American mayor at the helm, and I would ask you to give him a round of applause. Um, I am blessed to have a senior senator that is extraordinary and one of the most respected senators, not now in the Senate, but in the pantheon of American senators. He delivers every single day for New Jersey, and I'm glad to see him here. And for the prodigiously, profoundly pugilistic Pasquale. Um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, there is no greater prize fighter for uh, New Jersey than Pascarell, what he does for his district every single day. He is tough. He may seem smaller than me in stature, but I am even physically afraid of him uh, because of how tough that he is. Uh, and it's great to be with you again today. Um, look, I, uh, the scourge of lead in our state is devastating. There's a saying, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. To have still in our state about 3,000 children every year being diagnosed with lead poisoning. What does lead do? It attacks a child's brain. It can do permanent lifetime brain damage. It erodes something called the executive function, which means that children who have been poisoned by lead do worse in school, more likely to be suspended. There is even links because of that lack of impulse control that they have more run-ins with the police. From the time I was a city councilman in a city like Patterson that has lots of old structures, we had lead rates that were epidemic. And when you sit with a mother whose child has permanent brain damage, who's done everything right, who works hard, who brings home food, keeps a roof over their head, gets them to school, checks the homework, but now finds this devastating news, that should arouse the outrage and empathy of us all. In New Jersey, we have water, drinking water problems. I'm proud to have written the bill, found a Republican co-sponsor that freed up about $100 million to deal with lead in our water here in New Jersey. But the lead paint problem persists. And it is not something we can't deal with. What we need is more of a commitment to the problem. So today, we are gathered here to celebrate, really, resources being made available to attack this problem. I'm grateful for all those senators on the Appropriations Committee that prioritized this problem, that got us those resources. I'm grateful for the processes that made this grant dollars available, and we are here today to recognize that progress is being made. Patterson is an incredible American city. It is, it is one of our greatest historic cities. The, the manufacturing of the city transformed the nation. Even the engine that connected yes. the Transcontinental Railroad, the first engine to go from coast to coast, was made right here in this city. The pride of Patterson, though, is not in those historic accomplishments. The pride of Patterson is still in her people the goodness of the people here, the grit, the guts. And this city deserves more. It deserves so much more in the midst of a crisis as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We have to get more. Bob Menendez said it right. Even the fact that we have been put on recess by Mitch McConnell is wrong in a crisis. There are bipartisan bills sitting on the sidelines, like mine, to help Patterson businesses, small businesses, $50 billion in a bipartisan bill that is a part of the HEROES Act that Pascrell got passed. Right. There's money that should be going to businesses right now in this city that are holding on by a threat. So I just simply want to end my remarks by saying to Pattersonians, it's a nonpartisan event, but go out and vote. Yes. Go out and vote. Yes. There are thousands of votes in this city. I know where they are. They're sitting on the kitchen table. Yes. The, 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 the ballots are sitting on, on, on the dining room table. I know somebody might even have there on the bathroom counter. <laughs> somebody might still have it on, on, on the porch. Pick up those ballots. Yes. Because if you vote, I tell you this right now, help is on the way. Yes. 
We will get help for hospitals that serve the health needs of Patterson's. We will get help for the public schools in Patterson. We will get help for businesses in Patterson. Mayor, can I get a hallelujah? We will get money for this municipality. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is one of those moments where the power is in your hands, literally in your hands, to make a commanding statement that we may be down, but we will rise. That we may have fallen, but we will get up again. That we may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm telling you right now, if we speak with a chorus of conviction, with the votes that are in our hands, if we get that done, we may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but I promise you, we will emerge. We will make it to the mountaintop, and indeed, I believe, as Patterson has done so many times before, uh, that we will again make this city and our nation the envy of the world and the promised land. Thank you, everyone. Senator, you're right. I want to encourage people to go out and participate in the process. And in Patterson, wherever your ballot is, in the bathroom or your kitchen table, don't let anybody touch your ballot but yourself. We don't want anybody tweeting about Patterson again. And if they're going to tweet, make sure you spell Patterson right. Right, Congressman? There's only one T in Patterson. How many T's? One T. <laughs> What's the T stand for? Trump? No. no. <laughs> terrific. So, terrific. I like that. So, Senator, thank you for your stirring words. It was an impressive sermon. In fact, I have an affinity for alliteration. I couldn't pull that one off. Prodigiously, profoundly, pugilistic, Pasquale, Patterson. But I believe that's an appropriate segue. Because he is, with all due respect, and I mean this with affection, pugilistic. I've actually witnessed him challenge many people to fights outside the steps of City Hall. Go ask the Turkish ambassador two years ago. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's got a lot of fight in him. And he picks and chooses his battles. But this is one where the congressman is coming out on top because he's fighting for our families. He's fighting for families that he's been representing for so long. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy, join me in welcoming our champion, the MVP, the most valuable Pattersonian, yes. Congressman Bill Pascrell. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we are truly amongst giants and our two senators. I work with them. I have the pleasure to work with them. And uh, they've taken a liking to Patterson both of them, and they were both mayors, as the mayor pointed out. But it's a pleasure to work with them because they are truly for the common good. I learned that term at Fordham University where I was a student from Patterson, and uh, common good means going beyond your, your, your own beliefs and worrying about everybody else. And sometimes that's not difficult to do. We get caught up in the aroma of Washington, as I call it, the aura. The director knows what I'm talking yeah. about. And you shut out how you got here, and you shut out your roots. And that's, that's a pity, because when that happens, you, for, you forget where you came from. I walk in here today proud to be a member of the Democratic Party, but most of my legislation is bipartisan. Because we are never going to make it to the other side unless we have, in the main issues of our time, everybody working together. And that may be a pipe dream. Maybe Pascrell's illusionary. I've been called worse. But the point of the matter is, if you don't have that as a goal, it surely is not going to happen. I know that Corey and Bob work very closely with the members of the Senate from both sides of the aisle. I know that. But they can stand up and fight when need be. And I can assure you, I will do that. So somebody asked me one day, down in Washington, no less, what are those 
a couple of scars on your head. And I had to point out, this is Mill Street. <laughs> That's Crooks Ave. <laughs> so I was never big in stature. I wasn't smart enough to know that, hey, <laughs> you're going to get your head knocked off in this thing. But this is a fight. Just today in the, in the record newspaper, on the front page, positive the positive flow about Bergen and Hudson drinking water from the, the Suez Corporation that delivers water to them. And they are changing part of their apparatus to deliver the water, and it's had a very positive effect. We can do this. I sit in awe when Congressman Kildee of Michigan talks about Flint and their experience. And now in the beginning, nobody listened. But when you see children and when you see the definite signs of breast cancer in these situations and what people are consuming in one of the most precious, precious things we have in life, water, we got to do something about this. And you know I'm always on the back of the, our own water commission. But we got to go another step further. We have to make sure that the way we get the water to people is up to the 21st century. My friends, it is not. So I welcome you all here today. I want to thank the mayor and, and Bob and Corey for the work they do every day. This is an important day for the children and the families. This federal grant, and I thank you for being here, Madam Director. Thank you. This federal grant will help us continue and expand our efforts to attack the serious lead paint and contaminated water crisis in our community. <clears throat> Whether in Michigan, across America, the harms of lead contamination have truly been devastating. Refusing to address this dangerous crisis to me is a grievous, grievous failure. Inaction has harmed countless children and families. Today we're acting, whether it's the water in our pipes or the paint on our walls, we must do more. We must reduce and eradicate the public health menace that is lead exposure, <clears throat> and this money is going to help us do that. By the way, it's one of the few places in the HUD budget which saw an increase, yeah. mm -hmm. because we know that in the president's budget, there was a 15%, 12 to 15% cut in the things that we care about. That's a fact. That's not fake news. My number one priority here is protecting children from exposure. They are the ones most vulnerable to the scourge. Federal awards like this will help Patterson identify, treat, and prevent lead contamination. And I want to congratulate, <clears throat> excuse me, our health force. You guys do a great job. I know the work that you do. And to our health commissioners here, our director, Ms. Castillo, Director Castillo, thank you for being here. This is a health issue. The federal award of $3.4 million is the product of our efforts. We also know this pandemic has caused a housing crisis, and as Senator Menendez mentioned, we passed the CARES Act to provide federal funds to our community. We received over $8 million. These funds have gone a long way to helping our community. But I know it's not enough. We need the HEROES Act. I voted on this twice. How many times I got to vote on this thing? And, and, and Senator McConnell, you're not going to hold us hostage. We're going to wear you down. It has been 167 days since the House passed the bill. 
Uh, the other side say we should let our communities go bankrupt. They've said it and are ignoring the pressing need we see today. I <clears throat> would be remiss without mentioning that today. October 29th, almost 230,000 Americans are dead. Over 70,000 are being infected daily. The average is 77,000 over the last seven days. Our nation is suffering. And many times the administration has failed us. This money is important for our communities. We cannot lose sight of the big picture around us. We're going to continue to fight. Lead is a menace in our society. And when you see who's being mostly affected, and the poor always get it in the neck, whether it's health issues or whether it's lead in our water or on the walls of our, home, our homes, they get it in the neck all the time. And I want them not to be online all the time. I want them to be served up front. And that's our obligation if we believe that everybody is born equal. When you don't believe that, then you see the crazy things that have happened in the last four years. You either mean it or you don't. You can't take an intermission from that. All men are created equal. You can't take an intermission. No intermissions are allowed. So I'm honored to be here. God bless you all for being here. It's a great day for Patterson. And you know all the ups and downs we've had? We deserve this celebration. God bless you all. Thank you. Well said. Well said, Congressman. Yes, it's true. In this pandemic, we have very little to celebrate. At least we can celebrate championship leadership that we're seeing here today. And I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that we've been persevering through the pandemic. That's an alliteration in Patterson. And quite frankly, I want to thank the members of my team, our business administrator, Kathleen Long. Thank you. Our economic development director, Mike Powell, our aforementioned health and human services commissioner, or should I say director, Oshin Castillo-Cruz, who's expecting a child within a month or so. So we want to be lead free as well. We also have our grant writer who brings home the bacon or halal bacon in Patterson, if you want to call it that. Andrew Ramalho, that's very important. And we have our public information officer, Jessica Diaz. And of course, Dr. Paul Prasad, our public health officer, whose contact tracing efforts with his team have gained national recognition. At this time, I'd like to call forward, representing the Patterson Municipal Council, a champion not only for children, but for parks. She's made it a point to say that parks and recreation are a priority in Patterson. In fact, next week, you, you've inspired me, you don't even know. Next week, Congressman, we'll be cutting the ribbon on another park that we've rehabilitated in Patterson. In so ladies, yes, in your neighborhood, for a change. where you got a couple scars you failed to mention, that was Fifth Ave. So without any further ado, Councilwoman at Large, Vice President of the City Council, Dr. Lalisa Mims. Good morning. And so when I was standing there, all I kept hearing was, it's all about the win. It's a rainy day, but we have some great giants that are reminded that it's all about the win. We have Senator Bob Menendez, who has been fighting for Patterson to make sure that he keeps making base hits, but it wasn't enough just to get a base hit. Then we have Senator Cory Booker, who can introduce me anytime he likes, <laughs> who has been fighting very prolifically and always on target for the win in four days, another win, but for another base hit. Then we have my neighbor who's been my actual neighbor all of my life in the city of Patterson, Congressman Bill Pasquale, who's all about the win, but yet it was another base hit. We have the great mayor of the city of Patterson who's doing a great job, another person on the front line, all about the win. Our councilman of the fifth ward, we call him Action Velez. <laughs> He's doing so much work out there. He's on the front line all about the win. We have HUD represented for the great work that Lynn is doing, all about the win. 
But today the children win. Today the families win. When $11.4 million comes to the city and we can address issues like lead and housing, quality of life, opioid, is all about the win. And today, Patterson hits a grand slam. It's all about the win. God bless you, and God bless the great city of Patterson. Good. She obviously watched the World Series. Hopefully the Mets can win one. Right? Look at that mask. I know, incredible. She had to come out in fashion. Yes, but today we are declaring and celebrating victory. We couldn't have victory without our next guest, because she came bearing gifts. Lynn, anytime you bring checks to Patterson, you are welcome yeah. in this city. I don't know what bank is going to deposit these large checks, but my BA will find a way. So ladies and gentlemen from Housing and Urban Development Department, our regional administrator, Lynn Patton. Yeah. Thank, you. Go ahead, Lynn. Thank you. I don't know how you follow this lineup. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, everybody who's here. Uh, I am Lynn Patton. I am the regional administrator for Region 2, New York and New Jersey, which covers um, Region 2 of the federal uh, uh, nation. Before we celebrate this amazing donation for lead remediation, I do want to acknowledge two very sobering facts which have been touched on by the prior speakers. But today is the anniversary of Hurricane Sandy which wrecked havoc throughout the Garden State, taking over 40 lives. And two, today we face a different kind of storm, one that is responsible for the deaths of over 16,000 New Jerseyans who have lost their lives to COVID-19. But in both scenarios, New Jersey leadership, many right here in this very room, have led the fight, refused to quit, and protected each and every New Jersey resident, young and old, black and white, Democrat and Republican. And as much as I am tempted to uh, defend and talk about the accomplishments of this administration and of course Secretary Carson, I know that tomorrow the only one of us that will be accused of violating the Hatch Act is me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't need to tell you that New York and New Jersey were not only the coronavirus epicenter of the United States, but they were the coronavirus epicenter of the world. And I want to thank Senators Booker, Menendez, obviously Congressman Bill Pascal, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, who I consider a close personal friend, Governor Phil Murphy, and of course, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, you have all been leading the charge, Vice President, Councilman, Thank you. The governor's office has done a great job pushing out rental assistance programs, small business assistance programs with HUD care funding. President Trump signed the CARES Act in March, a historic $2 trillion economic relief package that would not have happened without Senators Booker, Senators Menendez, and Congressman Pascal. Thank you so much. You worked hard to advocate for a record $306 million for the state of New Jersey. Of this $306 million, Patterson received $8 million in CARES Act funding, which is comprised of community development block grant funding, ESG, emergency services grants, and HOME, uh, which will help Patterson prepare to respond and continue to respond to this pandemic. This historic level of funding can be used for homelessness, for homelessness prevention, for rental assistance, and to protect and assist area residents during this crisis. Through the collaboration of federal, state, and local private partners, we will continue to work and share resources to help all Americans because that is what it's truly all about. I know Senator Menendez, when I was first appointed, had made uh, the plea to, New to HUD that um, prior regional administrators might not have given New Jersey the attention that it deserved. Um, since my inception here for the last four years, I've made it a point to be in a New Jersey city at least two to three times a month. Um, I've worked with everybody standing behind me on multiple uh, policies and, and projects. Um, Caitlin's great, by the way. Um, the, the work that these 
great leaders and the mayor are doing behind us um, are amazing. So together uh, and working together is really what it all comes down to. And as the mayor said, this week is National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week, and I cannot think of a better way to mark this occasion than by presenting the city of Patterson with $3.4 million in funding to protect children. Like the mayor said, today, 66 families, potentially hundreds of lives, are now on a new trajectory. As the senator so aptly pointed out, trajectories that could mean a devastating future for so many of these children who were never given a fighting chance. Now they will be, as the Vice President said, a win forward. So I want to recognize everyone who has supported Patterson in seeking out additional funding, like the Mayor said, the grant writers, um, City Council, uh, the Director of Human Health Services, um, Economic Development, of course, Patterson Housing Authority Director, and also my team at HUD. I want to, uh, first of all, take this moment to announce the permanent appointment of Justin Scheid. Um, some of you might know him. He's been at HUD for quite some time working on Sandy Rebuild. I know um, Senator Menendez and I did a tour um, in Hoboken with Justin. He is now the permanent field office director in Newark. Um, who can deliver all of your HUD needs for the, city, for the state of New Jersey. So make your HUD wish list, give it to that man over there. He can make it happen, thank you. Thank you, Olga, and thank you, Carlton, for all of your tremendous help um, in putting this amazing event together. Um, today's announcement of 3.4 million will go a long way. And unfortunately, Region 2 is also the epicenter, as the mayor touched on before of lead hazards. Um, Newark for many years has had the greatest number of lead poisoned children in the state of New Jersey. More than 3,000 children, as the Senator touched on, are diagnosed with lead poisoning every year. But Patterson too has had serious lead problems due to their old housing stock. Um, in 2019, there were over 210 cases of children who tested positive for elevated lead levels in their blood. In 2018, the year before, 318. A lot of that does have to do with the fact that, as the Congressman so aptly pointed out, thank you, uh, Secretary Carson recognizes the nexus between health and housing and has, in perpetuity, increased lead funding uh, to disproportionately affect uh, many of these types of scenarios. Um, and again, the people living in these uh, lead-infected homes tend to be the highest poverty levels, the greatest minority demographics. And we have given to fight this battle over $88 million in lead reduction grants. And I am positive today that 3.4 will spend, pay dividends for the city of Patterson. And I'm going to end on this one last stat that always blows my mind. Um, for every one dollar that is given today of the $3.4 million, it is a return investment for the city of Patterson of over $221 in reduced health care costs, increased school attendance, and increased employment and lifetime earnings. So that is something that I think we can all join hands and applaud. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it, and it's an honor and let's uh, present these yes, checks. Yes, please, Lynn. Without any further ado, we don't want them to expire. <laughs> so this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the official presentation of both checks. Yes. So, Lynn, if you do the honor, please. Please. Thank you. You need help carrying that? or No. Okay. Well, Senator, well, he's a chivalrous man. <laughs> Why don't we all stand? Um, yes. <laughs> you know us. We will.
once again, I want to thank everyone jo for joining us for this official presentation of the checks. Thank you, everyone. Yes, perfect.